Hello and welcome to the ISTQB Foundation Level Acceptance Testing Training and Certification Program. Single solution for your preparation. This accredited course is going to teach you each and everything you need to know to become a successful ISTQB certified professional. While other courses only cover the theoretical concepts, our course not only covers these theoretical concepts, but also covers real-time examples. In addition, we make sure you remember the topics by providing revisions, quizzes, and different exercises. The highlight of this course is that it contains topic-wise explanation, topic-wise quizzes, chapter-wise quizzes, two sample question papers. Our courses are not developed by just one person, but a special team of highly qualified professionals and experienced educators who are working in the leading industries. This includes subject matter experts to help you with technical topics, trained voiceover artists to make sure you get a great audio learning experience, and an experienced graphic designer to enhance the visualization. We have a wide experience in teaching online and we have more than 30 popular courses listed in online platform for different certifications. It is our genuine pleasure to use all our experience and expertise to train you and help you obtain an official ISTQB certification. As of now, we are teaching in 143 countries with more than 1 lakh students and still growing. Now it's your turn to join our growing family and become part of it. In return, you will get advice from industry experts who will help you throughout the course. Join ISTQB Foundation Level Acceptance Testing Training by enrolling now and become part of us. There is no need to worry. This course is backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee. You got nothing to lose. Let's get you ISTQB certified. Hello, and welcome to Chapter 1, Introduction and Foundations. At the end of this lecture, you must note these keywords. Acceptance Criteria acceptance testing, requirement, and user story. Along with the keywords, we have some learning objectives. The first main topic is fundamental relationships, and here we will recall the relationship between business goals, business needs, and requirements. Explain the relationship between requirements or user stories acceptance criteria, and acceptance tests, and explain how the quality of requirements or user stories and acceptance criteria affects acceptance testing. The second main topic is business analysis and acceptance testing. Here we will summarize the relationship between acceptance testing activities and business analysis activities. Explain how testers and business analysis collaborate in acceptance testing activities and describe acceptance test-driven development and behavior-driven development. Let's get started with the lecture. In this lecture, we will cover fundamental relationship. We will only see the introduction of fundamental relationship and in upcoming lectures, we will address each of these learning objectives. Normally, we have two known team members in software development lifecycle, business analysis, tester. Each one of them has different responsibilities. The business analysis is responsible to describe specific business needs and determine business case that addresses those needs. And the tester performs testing activities to measure the quality of the software and ensure that it behaves as customer required. It appears that the two are different, but in fact, they complement each other. Most of the inputs needed for the tester 
are the outputs of test analysis activities. Also, the test outputs depend mainly on business analysis output. Now we will see an example to understand this. And the clearest example about it is acceptance testing. What is acceptance testing? Test level performed to assess the system's readiness for deployment. It's usually used by end user. To perform acceptance testing, we need input. This input comes from the business analyst. If the requirements are unclear, it may lead to incorrect acceptance criteria and the outcome of tests will be flawed. When all testing activities are completed and the system is ready to go live, we should now ensure that it is the right system requested by the customer and meet his needs. It is important that the requirements should be clear, and therefore, the tester should have the capability to review the requirements and find the ambiguity between them, also to detect any deficiencies. Acceptance tests are always derived from user stories, acceptance criteria, and use cases. With this, what we can conclude is, good collaboration between business analysts and testers is particularly important for a proper consideration of the business implications at this test level. Let's see a real-life example on Amazon.com site. Business analyst will write the user story like this. Once the product details page is open, we can view all the product details, description, colors, brand information, etc. As a tester based on the user story and other inputs, you may write acceptance test like this. First, you will mention the test ID. Then you can provide the brief abstract of the requirement like Verify that user can open the product details page with the complete details. And then you can mention the test steps. First, user navigate to www.amazon.com. Second, search for a specific product. Third, click on the product title. And then you can mention the expected result based on input from business analyst output. For example, site should navigate to the product's details page, and the user will be able to view all the subsections in the product details page. And the test can have one of the result, pass or failed. You can represent the scenario like this. With this, the lecture ends. In this lecture, we will cover business goals business needs and requirements topic. The learning objective here is to recall the relationship between business goals, business needs, and requirements, and it is marked as K1. That means we have to remember the topic. Let's first see how business goals, business needs, and requirements are related in an organization. First, business analysts understands the organization's overall business goal, identify current business processes and stakeholders. Next, they describe specific business needs, and to fulfill these business needs, they describe business case, identifying business goal and describing specific business need is considered as a high-level task. At the end, requirements can be written for business and this requirement will go for development. Here, requirement refers to business requirements and product requirements. The same word is used for both types of requirement. Let's go through this process quickly. Business analysts understand the business goal, identify business processes and stakeholders. 
describe specific business needs. For that, they describe business cases, and at the end, requirements are written. And the important point which you need to consider is business goals, business needs, business requirements, and product requirements are described at different levels of abstraction. In this lecture, we will cover requirements or user stories, acceptance criteria, and acceptance tests topic. Here, the learning objective is to explain the relationship between user stories, acceptance criteria, and acceptance tests. This is marked as K2. That means you have to understand the topic. As we know, First, we get the requirement from the customer. Then, the business analyst analyzes the requirement and writes the user story. This user story is nothing but a requirement for the test team. During the requirement or user story, development process tester along with the developer write the acceptance criteria. Now, you may ask why the tester works with the developer to write acceptance criteria. The reason is, if they work together, they will come to the mutual understanding of what acceptable means from the business, development, and testing perspectives right from the beginning of the project. And if we come to the mutual consensus at the beginning of the project, we can avoid misunderstanding and bugs in the product. Because the cost of the change becomes very high in the final stages of the project, and once the acceptance criteria are ready, the tester writes the acceptance test cases. Let's try to understand this concept more clearly with the help of block diagram. First stage is defining acceptance criteria from a user story. You can define two or more acceptance criteria from a single user story. Most of the time, both testers and developers are involved in this process. And in the second stage, you can write the test cases based on the acceptance criteria. And to validate on acceptance criteria, you can write one or more test cases. This task is mostly done by the testers. We used the term acceptance criteria to understand it more clearly. Acceptance criteria are measurable criteria formulated as a statement or a set of statements which can be either true or false. It specifies what shall be tested to verify that a requirement or user story has been implemented correctly. Represent the test conditions which determine what to test and do not contain the detailed test procedures. It does not contain how to test. Let's understand this with the help of an example. Suppose this is a user story. The customer wants to register online so that they can start online shopping. Then we can write acceptance criteria like this. User can only submit a form by filling in all mandatory fields. User cannot register by existing email. User will receive a notification email after a successful registration. Let's take this acceptance criteria to write acceptance test. User cannot register by existing email. Acceptance test cases will be like Verify that when user enter new email, it will be accepted, and form could be submitted. Verify that if user enter exist email, an error message will be displayed and a form can't be submitted. Let's summarize the important point. First, we get customer requirement. From customer requirement, the business analyst writes the user story. Then tester along with developer writes the acceptance criteria. And finally, the tester writes the acceptance test. With this, the lecture ends.
In this lecture, we will cover the importance of the quality of the requirements. Here, the learning objective is to explain how the quality of requirements or user stories and acceptance criteria affects acceptance testing. This is marked as K2, which means you have to understand this topic. Let's use the same block diagram to understand this topic. By now, we know that user story is written by the business analyst. An acceptance criteria is written by tester and developer to ensure common understanding. And at the end, acceptance test cases are written by the tester. Now, if you see this flow, it is clear that development of test cases are completely dependent on the requirement and acceptance criteria. And if this is the case, the wrong requirement or user story will lead to wrong acceptance criteria and finally results into wrong test cases. Now, the next question is what will happen if we have wrong test cases? And if the product is tested wrongly, the same product will be delivered to the customer. And finally, customer will see failure. If we find the mistake at this time, we have to do lots of rework. There will be a damage to company's reputation. Fixing issue at this point is time consuming process. And finally, it will cost a lot to the company. Let's understand this in more detail. Let's have a look into this famous defect time graph. This graph shows that the more lately we find the defect, the more we have to pay. In the requirements stage, you have to pay less. And if the software is in live use, you have to pay more to fix the defect. Let's understand this with the help of the model. If you find the defect during requirement stage, the cost is less. Because you found the defect here and you are fixing it in the same phase. Now let's take another scenario. Suppose there was a defect in the requirement phase, but you didn't find it, and it was found in the acceptance testing. Now you need to correct all the below phases. Since the requirement is wrong, the design is wrong or ambiguous. The implementation is wrong. All the corresponding test cases are wrong. Now, based on the defect, you have to rework on all these phases, and it will take time. That is why we say we should find the defect as early as possible. Based on the analysis, we can say that if user story or acceptance criteria are ambiguous or missing information, it will lead to flaw in acceptance criteria and tests. Because testers can make wrong assumptions about stakeholder expectations and business needs, now the next question is how we can minimize the defects in requirement stage. For that, the tester should have the capability to review on the requirements and find the ambiguity between them. Also to detect any deficiencies. Also, the testers should work closely with business analysts to make sure that requirements are clear and well understood ambiguities should be resolved, and assumptions should be clarified. These all will be resulting to valid acceptance criteria. Moreover, when acceptance criteria are valid, the acceptance tests will be valid. Now let's see a well-known technique used in Agile development team to create user story collaboratively. And the techniques is called invest. This may be used by business analysts, product owners, developers, and testers to ensure the quality of user stories. Now let's see what invest means and how it helps in creating user story. Invest stands for independent, negotiable, valuable, estimable, small, testable, where independent means that the user's story should be self-contained in a way that there is no inherent dependency on another user's story. Negotiable means that 
the user story can be changed and rewritten before they become part of the iteration, so teams should be ready for it. Next is valuable, which means a user story must deliver value to the end user. Next is estimable. You must always be able to estimate the size of a user story. Next is small. User stories should not be so big as to become impossible to plan, task, or prioritize with a certain level of certainty. Last one is testable. The user story or its related description must provide the necessary information to make test development possible. This is all about invest technique. It is used to create user collaboratively. The ISO IEC IEEE 29148-2011 standard ISO IEC 29148-2011 provides a good practices of the requirements engineering process to ensure the development of good quality requirements. At the end, what we can conclude is Business analysts, developers, and testers shall work together to develop the quality requirement or user story. Let's summarize all the points. If user story is vague or ambiguous, tester may make a wrong assumption about stakeholder expectation and business need. And a wrong assumption of requirement will result in flawed acceptance criteria. It will lead to lots of rework running of invalid or wrong test cases, risk and uncertainty about product, increase in project cost. Therefore, a tester must work closely with business analysts to make sure requirement is clear and well understood, ambiguities are resolved, assumptions are clarified. Next, we saw how invest technique helps in developing quality user story in agile development. And the last point is ISO IEC IEEE 29148-2011 standard ISO IEC 29148-2011 provides good practices of the requirements engineering process to ensure the development of good quality requirements. In this lecture, we will cover business analysis and acceptance testing concept. Here, we will only see the overview of the topic, and in the upcoming lecture, we will cover all these learning objectives. Let's see the workflow diagram to understand this concept. First, we get the requirement from the customer. These documents are analyzed by the business analyst, and based on his understanding and experience, User stories are written. These user stories are used to create acceptance criteria. And then testers use these acceptance criteria to write acceptance test cases. Based on the test cases, product testing is performed. And once the validation is done, the product is delivered to the customer. Now, if we consider only the testing environment, business analyst and tester are playing key roles. And if they both work separately, there is a chance that testers will make wrong assumptions about stakeholder expectations and business needs. So, it will lead to misunderstandings about business and customer expectations. That will lead to flawed acceptance criteria and tests. And that will lead to rework and creating unnecessary costs. Waste of time because of running wrong test cases. And the cost of the change is very high at the final stages of the project. In addition, no one will realize those misunderstandings, as testers will perform their tests after requirements have been developed, and you may finally release the wrong product. Finally, what we can conclude is the testers should work closely with business analysts to ensure that they are at the same and right understanding of acceptance criteria 
from the beginning of the project, as you understood that valid acceptance criteria lead to valid acceptance tests. In this lecture, we will cover the relationship between business analysis and testing activities. Here, the learning objective is to summarize the relationship between acceptance testing activities and business analysis activities. First, we will see the task of the business analyst. Then, we will see the tasks of the tester, and after that, we will see the relationship between both activities. Now, let us focus on business analysis activities. The main elements of the business analysis activities are strategy definition, management of the business analysis processes, requirements engineering in business analysis, solution evaluation and optimization, and the responsibility of business analysts is understands the organization's overall business goal, identify current business processes, and identify stakeholders. Next, he describes specific business needs, and to fulfill these business needs, they describe business case. And the role of business analysts is to establish consensus between all team members which includes quality engineers, testers, developers, system integrators, product managers, and project managers. This is all about business analysts, activities, responsibility, and role. Now let's focus on testing activities. In the ISTQB foundation level, we saw that test process consists of the following main groups of activities. Test planning, test monitoring and control, test analysis, test design, test implementation, test execution, test completion. And there are many associated activities and tasks that are related to both business analysis and testing, which we will see next. Since now, we know the activities of business analyst and tester. It's time to see the relationship between them. We will use these two examples to establish a relationship between both. The first example is requirements engineering in business analysis versus test planning, test analysis, and test design. The second example is solution evaluation in business analysis versus test implementation, test execution, and test completion. Now let's see each of these examples in detail. The first example is requirements engineering in business analysis versus test planning, test analysis, and test design. Let's understand this. Initially, business analysts prepare detailed business and product requirements. If you remember in the previous lecture, we learned that most of the inputs needed for the tester are the outputs of business analyst activities. Example of it we can see now. Here, detailed business and product requirements will serve as an input for the test planning, test analysis, and test design activities. And as a tester, we are responsible for defining their objectives, plan their work, Evaluate the specifications and requirements. Identify test conditions. And design test cases and test procedures. Along with this, the based on test analysis and test design activities, testers can contribute to the definition and verification of acceptance criteria. 
it may result in changes in acceptance criteria. This is how Tester contributes to the acceptance criteria or user story. When testers work together with business analysts, Will ensures that they are at the same and proper understanding of the solution. It ensures that they agree on the appropriate approach to acceptance testing. Now let's see an important point. Till now, we saw when we get the customer requirements at the starting of the project. Now we'll see what happens when the requirement comes in between the development cycle. And in reality, this is the most common scenario. Because in most of the projects, the requirements are modified late in the software development cycle. Suppose the requirement are modified during the testing phase. In that case, for the next testing cycle, business analysts and testers can work together to assess the impact of the changes. Remember, requirements change represents risks to the success and completion of a project, and proper analysis to reduce this risk. The second example is solution evaluation in business analysis versus test implementation, test execution, and test completion. Here we will see how a business analyst contributes to testing activity in solution evaluation phase in business analysis. The business analysts support test implementation and test execution activities. Now, you may think since test implementation, execution and completion is a testing activity, how is the business analyst involved in it? The business analyst reviews the test procedures or test scripts developed by the tester and clarify issues and potentially help with the creation of test data to support business-related tests. Now let's understand the workflow. Tester writes the test case based on acceptance criteria. The developed test is sent to a business analyst for review. Business analyst lists down the review comment and sends it to the tester. Based on the review, business analyst notifies the tester about review points. The tester then fixes the review comments and sends it to the business analyst for confirmation. After the confirmation, test cases are ready for the execution. Now let's list down how business analyst contributes in testing activity. Also, when we need to assess the system's readiness for deployment, business analysts can assist with the implementation and execution of the acceptance tests. They may also support testers by evaluating test results. In addition, they may assist testers in test completion activities. Before going further with the explanation, let's summarize how tester and business analyst collaborate. Testers work closely with business analysts to make sure that requirements are clear and well understood. Ambiguities should be resolved, and assumptions should be clarified. And based on the test design and test implementation, testers can contribute to the definition and verification of acceptance criteria. It may result in changes in acceptance criteria. Business analysts work closely with the tester so that they can assist with the implementation and execution of the acceptance tests. They may also support testers by evaluating test results. They review the test cases to see if it's meeting the acceptance criteria or not. In addition, they may assist testers in test completion activities. Finally, what we can conclude is the strong and symbiotic relationship between the two roles and the respective activities for business analyst and the testing activities should start at the very beginning of a project.
In this lecture, we will cover the collaboration between business analysts and testers in acceptance testing topic. Here, the learning objective is to explain how testers and business analysts collaborate in acceptance testing activities. This is marked as K2, so you have to understand this topic. In the previous lecture, we saw how business analysts and testers contribute to each other's activity. But the question is why they have to do this. They have to do this to achieve the common goal. And the common goal is to support the production of products with the highest possible value for the customer. As they ensure that developed product meet customer needs. Now let's see the next important point. We explained before that business analysts can assist with the implementation and execution of the acceptance tests. Along with that, the business analysts can assist in other areas like collaboration on test planning based on risk analysis. To ensure that the appropriate test cases will be developed and prioritized. Let's explain this in detail. There are so many testing activities to be carried out that they must be prioritized. Data provided by risk analysis plays an important role in determining this priority list. Once the testing task is prioritized, low level test cases are expected to be created. The plan could contain inputs from the business team about risk analysis before the creation of test cases can commence. Now let's see a few examples. If there is a high risk of system performance issues or system performance is critical, performance testing is given the highest priority when the code is delivered for testing. Also, there is risk-based testing. That focus is on identifying activities that can diminish risks and coming up with a contingency plan. Product risk analysis data acts as a guide for prioritizing testing activities here. This relationship between business analysis and testing during acceptance testing also has benefit in understand and appropriate each other's work and better collaborate within the project. We saw the related example in the previous lecture, where business analysts and testers were contributing to each other's work. By doing this, they get the opportunity to cross-train team members. And the more we know about the business needs and stakeholder requirements, the better will be the acceptance test case. Now let's quickly revise the important points. The common goal for business analysts and testers is to support the production of products with the highest possible value for the customer. And to achieve the business goal, business analysts and testers collaborate. For example, business analysts can assist in test planning based on risk analysis to ensure that the appropriate test cases will be developed and prioritized. By collaboration, the team gets an important opportunity to cross-train team members. And team clearly knows the Bell business needs and stakeholder requirement. Since both know what other is doing, they will understand and appreciate each other's work and better collaborate within the project. Hello and welcome to the ISTQB Foundation Level Acceptance Testing Training and Certification Program. Single solution for your preparation. This accredited course is going to teach you each and everything you need to know to become a successful ISTQB Certified Professional. While other courses only cover the theoretical concepts, our course not only covers these theoretical concepts but also covers real-time examples. In addition, we make sure you remember the topics by providing revisions, quizzes, and different exercises. The highlight of this course is that it contains topic-wise explanation, topic-wise quizzes, chapter-wise quizzes, two sample question papers, 
Our courses are not developed by just one person, but a special team of highly qualified professionals and experienced educators who are working in the leading industries. This includes subject matter experts to help you with technical topics, trained voiceover artists to make sure you get a great audio learning experience, and an experienced graphic designer to enhance the visualization. We have a wide experience in teaching online and we have more than 30 popular courses listed in online platform for different certifications. It is our genuine pleasure to use all our experience and expertise to train you and help you obtain an official ISTQB certification. As of now, we are teaching in 143 countries with more than 1 lakh students and still growing. Now it's your turn to join our growing family and become part of it. In return, you will get advice from industry experts who will help you throughout the course. Join ISTQB Foundation Level Acceptance Testing Training by enrolling now and become part of us. There is no need to worry. This course is backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee. You got nothing to lose. Let's get you ISTQB certified.